expand our imagination. Welcome to Washington Unplugged. I'm Jan Crawford. With just five days to go until Election Day, the latest New York Times CBS News poll has more unsettling news for Democrats. Joining us today to discuss his page one piece is Jim Rutenberg from the New York Times. We'll then go to the spokesman for the Republican National Committee and the Democratic National Committee, Doug High and Hari Savugin. For more analysis, wait, Savugin, I think. Uh, sorry about that, Hari. And finally, some insider info from Politico's Kiki Ryan on Mr. Stewart going to Washington. But first, Jim Rutenberg from the New York Times. Jim, your piece today was uh, typically terrific, uh, but it seems like the takeaway from this latest poll is that the Obama coalition is just kind of falling apart. Where are the Republicans picking up ground? Well, to, to us, the most striking two sort of subsets were women and then Catholics. And um, but you know, then it goes on and on. I mean, people with college educations or income disbar kind of le groups that have shifted over or are shifting over. It's very interesting. So these were all uh, groups that were with Obama uh, just just two years ago and with congressional Democrats. I mean, what does that uh, say to you when you're looking at some of these these numbers from the poll? I don't know, you know, well, there's the dissatisfaction with the direction of the country is really large. Um, the dissatisfaction with Congress is huge. It's near record levels for the history of our joint poll, uh, CBS and us. So um, I think part of it's just the, the, obviously the economic drag, but the, the women number to me are particularly uh, hard to figure out. Well, that was what, I mean, that to me, when, when we're talking about what's quite dramatic and new in this poll, you said in your piece that in September, uh, women were favoring Democrats by seven points. Uh, now with this most recent polling, I think it's uh, four points uh, the other way. I mean, is that, right. did, did I read that right? Yeah, it's a big swing. Um, it's within margin of error, but still, uh, you know, there is, a, uh, at least on paper, there's a gain by Republicans, and for there's really a huge swing. So at worst for Republicans, it's even, which is extraordinary. Now, I'm not going to ask you to, you know, to kind of predict what, what is going on with women in general, but are there any uh, questions or anything that came out of that poll that would suggest what's behind this, uh, uh, congressional candidates across the country that seem to be uh, really kind of touching a chord with women? Uh, I mean, what, what would you say could explain some of that? You know, I think it's strict pocketbook issues. If you think about it, social issues have not really, have not been the driving force in this campaign. It's been pocketbook issues. And, you know, the, the conventional wisdom my whole life has been that women traditionally control the, the kind of household finances. And well, in so the household, I mean, I think really we can say the household in general. And, and, and frankly, should probably control the world. But anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No argument. I was <laughs> raised by, no, absolutely. I was raised by women. And, um, you know. But no, the economy but, uh, is a big issue for, for women, uh, I guess, and that's something that we're seeing in this poll with these results. Yeah, that is the main thing. But, you know, to me, it's all these groups are shifting. And you mentioned yourself that um, in September there was a lead for the Democrats among women. So the interesting thing is that's then the Democrats went on a big pitch for women over the last few weeks. So this, this decline in their numbers coincides with their real active work. Now, what's the significance, though? I mean, do, I, this, would this be a kind of historic or, or how unprecedented would it be if, if women actually went for Republicans in these congressional races? Well, in the history of the EXA polling that you network started and, and we uh, kind of work with as well, the women have never overwhelmingly, as a class, uh, voted for Republicans over Democrats. In 2002, the EXA polls showed there was a tie, but those EXA polls were, you know, really problematic, and so everyone agreed afterward. But so at the very, worst, at the very least, there was a tie in 02, but not since 82 has there been a uh, Republican victory. Let me ask you. Women. Let me ask you a, a kind of a broader question along those lines. What does this mean? It seems like uh, the, the polling numbers show that, that the approval rating for the president is, is around what 43 percent. Yeah. What does this say about voters' uh, impressions of, of President Obama? Because there's another uh, figure in the polling that shows they're still pretty optimistic about the next two years. How do you make sense of that? That to me, is, I wondered if some of that isn't voters thinking, well, Republica, uh, that, that Republicans are going to take a chamber of Congress or two, and now they're looking at him in a divided government uh, sort of context, and they're um, kind of feeling more optimistic, you know, about how things could go. But I, it, it's a little bit baffling at the same time. I don't, you know, this, this poll, the, the public is in a really angry and unpredictable mood, which is also why, let's caveat this with saying, election day could upend everything we think right now. 
And then, of course, the enthusiasm gap remains decisively, it seems, and has been uh, in, in Republicans' favor. So that's uh, uh, important for what voter turnout. Yeah, and um, you know the Democrats. I thought you know, a couple of weeks ago we were hearing about a spike in, in their interest, and some of the early voting numbers are coming in. And Democrats have been pointing to those as sort of indications that their enthusiasm is higher. This poll wasn't finding that yet. So, all right, Jim. Well, thanks a lot. We really appreciate it, uh, and we look forward to hearing more from you in the next, maybe in the next few days. But certainly yeah, look great. forward to reading your stuff in the Times in the days and next week when you try to make sense of all these results. Thanks for joining us. Right back at you. Thanks. thanks. And now turning to our roundtable, Doug High from the RNC and Hari Savugan. I got it wrong in the intro. Sorry about Very that. Well. But you know, we're interested in accuracy here. Uh, so I you know, appreciate thanks for that. giving me another. My chance. name's the one that's always mispronounced. So Doug I really High. feel it. Yeah, it's right now. Thank you. But hi, Doug. Thanks for joining us. You heard some of our discussion just now with Jim. Uh, let me just start with you because uh, I, I mean I frame this as it's pretty unsettling uh, for the Democrats. Uh, what's your take on this, Doug? We think it definitely is. Yeah, I've, I've been in about uh, 10 or 11 states over the past three weeks and everywhere I've gone we've seen that uh, voter dissatisfaction uh, is at a fever pitch. They don't like what this Congress has done, what this president has done. They don't like how it's been done, meaning how it's been implemented, how bills were passed. Uh, and they're angry and they want to change. And if you want to change Washington, the quickest way to do that is to fire Nancy Pelosi and hire, uh, retire Harry Reid. Now, Harry, some of the uh, more uh, recent pollings, as Jim mentioned, suggested there had been a spike, uh, at least at some point, for Democrats in, in that kind of pivotal enthusiasm gap. But that maybe is, is dissipated in this most recent polling. I think is, there's is polling. Is this unsettling or is this just no? I think there's recent polling. Stuff? No, I think there's recent polling that shows that uh, that enthusiasm has picked up on our side. If you look at the Newsweek poll that came out this week, or even the Rasmussen poll, which has us within three, uh, and it's Rasmussen, Washington Post shows us picking up seven points this past month. And if you're looking at individual races, just this morning there's a race out of uh, or there's a poll out of Alaska that shows uh, that uh, our candidate Scott McAdam is pulled ahead of Joe Miller. Uh, in California, our candidates are decisively taking the lead. But beyond the polling, we're looking at the actual mm -hmm. votes that are coming in. And looking at early votes uh, as an indication of uh, enthusiasm, what we're seeing is in 11 key states, California, Illinois, Ohio, Nevada, we are ahead. And we're ahead. Whoa, 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 but you're ahead in terms of people voting voting early. early and you would think that the most enthusiastic folks would be the ones that are out there voting early if there is a and real enthusiasm gap necessarily voting for democrats I, democratic registrants are voting at a higher rate uh, and in higher numbers in key states across the country now that we can talk about polling with small sample sizes across the country and there's a lot of volatility there uh, but in actual votes, Democrats are doing better. And I think what that shows is Republicans haven't closed the deal. They can't seal the deal because they're not offering the American people anything but more of the same and more obstruction. Now, Doug, obviously some of the stuff in this poll does suggest this, uh, that, that voters do remain optimistic about kind of the second uh, part of the president's a tenure in the White House. Uh, so there's some good news for Democrats in this poll. Let me ask you, though, about this uh, early voting. Um, that is, not, is that a necessarily an arbiter of, of, are these Democrats, can we be certain, are voting for the Democratic candidate? Because didn't Republicans uh, get in some trouble a, a few years ago when you guys thought, oh, Republicans are turning out, and then they were turning out for sure. it's Democrats? Also a reason, it's also a reason never to believe exit polls. But, you know, Hari's right in mentioning some states where Democrats are ahead, but the reality is they are ahead by a much uh, smaller margin than they were in 2008 when enthusiasm for the Obama campaign was off the charts. Uh, you take a state like Florida, where we really got shellacked by Democrats in 2008. We're up about 130,000 Republican versus Democrat votes of early voting. Uh, you take a state like North Carolina with a lot of enthusiasm, my home state, uh, a lot of enthusiasm with college voters, with historically black colleges and universities, really driving early voting in 2008. We're neck and neck with them right now. And Republicans and Democrats go after early votes in a different way. Uh, Democrats tend to go after their base, the most excited um, voters on either side. Well, Republicans think that our, we tend to think that our base is a bit more reliable, uh, and we try and go for those voters who don't have as high a propensity as normal. Well, when, when you picked up the New York Times and saw that headline, you know, the Obama coalition seems to be fraying. I mean, what's your take on it? I mean, so how did you react to that? I think that, in the that, end, that has to be somewhat unsettling. I think in the end, uh, our base is going to come home. Uh, but but these that. are the coalition voters that maybe well, were the, the independents and the people in the middle. Even within uh, that New York Times poll, uh, it showed that our base was doing fairly well. We're doing well with African Americans, we're doing well with Latinos, we're doing well with young voters. Uh, other polling is showing that we're doing well across the board of our base. But let me just address very quickly something Doug said about uh, 
uh, our base versus uh, some of these voters that wouldn't ordinarily come out in a midterm. If you look more closely at early vote numbers, just looking at the subset of these so-called sporadic voters who would ordinarily sit out a midterm, we're actually doing even better than we are overall with those voters in key states across the country. I think what that shows is that enthusiasm is uh, that enthusiasm gap has been overstated, uh, and that our on-the-ground operation uh, is capturing uh, our enthusiasm, while theirs uh, still seems to be in a state of disarray. So, are you suggesting that you know all all the talk? I mean, all the polling, all the the big uh, kind of you know hand wringing or celebration, depending on where you're coming from, about how. Republicans are going to make significant headway next Tuesday and mm -hmm. take over the House is completely overstated. Do you think Democrats are going to hold on to the House? I mean, what's your bottom line? We feel we feel very optimistic. Of, we, uh, we, you're optimistic we about encouraging signs coming out of early vote, encouraging signs from what we're seeing in the field, encouraging signs what we're seeing in the polls and in individual races, uh, whether it's in California or Alaska or Nevada or Ohio. Things are tightening. They're going. They're trending our way. We feel like uh, that will all uh, climax on. Uh, November 2nd, and we'll do very well. But, but will you hold on to the House? We think so. We, we're confident that, that we're going to be in a position to win. We think we're at 38 seats, and we need to get to 39. But uh, Jim's story, uh, I think, was, was demonstrated uh, last night on The Daily Show that this Obama coalition is absolutely fractured. Well, we had John, John Stewart, who has been a, a, a real proponent of the president's in, in 2008 when he was a candidate, basically last night say, dude, where are the jobs? Well, and you know, that's, a, that's a, a question the president can't answer. Look, I think if you're looking about a base that's fractured and a, and a party that's fractured, look at the Republican Party. You have Karl Rove saying that the Tea Party is unsophisticated and Sarah Palin doesn't have the gravitas to lead. I think the, the Republican Party should look within themselves. They have third-party candidates across the country. We don't have candidates who are shooting right. our legislation with guns. But we don't have candidates who are saying that I voted against Barack Obama two years ago. We don't have candidates who said I don't support Nancy Pelosi and I'll vote against her. All right, guys. Even though their first vote is a member of Congress in this cycle, right, the vote. In this cycle the, was the, the vote voters for Nancy will decide at the polls on Tuesday. But one thing I think we can all agree on here, if I can shift gears for a minute, since you did bring this up. Uh, the president made an appearance on uh, John Stewart's show last night, and it seems like the one um, uh, the one thing from just reading about it, I wasn't there, but from reading about it, the, he got pretty good reviews, but now people are turning on John Stewart and saying, uh, you know, what's with all the softballs from our, our you know, the media's darling uh, uh, of, of television? We got a clip of that, so let's listen to it, okay? So you wouldn't, you wouldn't say you'd run this time as a pragmatist. You would not. It wouldn't be, yes, we can, given certain conditions. No, no, no I, I, think, I think what I would say is, yeah. yes, we can, but it <laughs> is not, but yeah. not going to ha happen overnight. Eh? So um, what was your take on that? I mean, is this going to be effective with young voters? You're talking about the base is going to come mm -hmm. out. Are these appearances uh, sure. good for well, the president? I think the president answered very tough questions, and he's willing to talk to Oh, so they weren't, you're not even agreeing that John Stewart was asking softballs? Certainly not. No, 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 no. Ah, there's just no common ground today. Okay. Yeah. So. I, think, I think the president <laughs> answered tough questions, and he's willing to talk to folks and, uh, across the board, across the spectrum, whether it's our base uh, or others, uh, which is a marked difference from what you're seeing from Republicans across the board. They're running away from the press. They're not willing to answer questions. We're seeing that in Ohio with their gubernatorial candidate. We're seeing that in Nevada with their senatorial candidate. We're seeing that in, in Alaska where people are handcuffing reporters. But last night we saw the president uh, on, on John Stewart's show. What was your impression of, of his appearance? And what I mean, does that make any difference at all? We've got a big rally coming up. Is that going to have any kind of... Uh, it, it demonstrates the political problem that the president has in, in trying to appeal to these voters who are, who are naturally Obama voters. But I looked at it and... And was sad um, that, that the sad. president that the president of the United States would go on just some comedy talk show um, to try and yuck it up. And and for for Republicans, it's not an issue of going on the Daily Show or the Tonight Show or the View or doing his brackets on ESPN. It's a, it's a question of doing the brackets on ESPN and the View and the Tonight Show and the Daily Show. I mean, thank well, God Baywatch is canceled. Otherwise, <laughs> well, we'd see but the there is a president for for obviously leading politicians going on some of those late night television shows. So I mean, I do feel like maybe that train has left the station. But since we're going to stay on this for a while, let's bring in Kiki Ryan from Politico, who is a kind of a, a special treat today because normally she joins us on Tuesday. So now uh, uh, back on. <laughs> well, on thank unplugged, you. I mean, of course. So uh, you were there at the. Uh -huh. uh, what was the mood like in the room? I mean, did you have a sense that, that obviously the crowd was, uh, oh, was happy to see Stuart, but yeah, they was were the mood very like? enthusiastic about Obama. Um, 
of course, but everyone there was was young. And, you know, people were, were talking while before waiting, wondering if it was going to be a good idea for him to do this, even though they both love you know, Stuart and Obama. But, you know, it was great to be there because Stuart spent so much time afterwards, about a half hour, taking questions from the audience. And even Stuart admitted that when, that clip we just saw when he got Obama saying, yes, we can, but he said when he said that in his mind, he thought, score. He knew that that was going to be the clip that people were going to be watching today because he kind of, he kind of did, I don't think it was very, uh, an easy interview. Well, we've you know. got a highlight reel. So okay, yeah, let's, the... uh, if, let's uh, see a few of kind of the uh, okay. best and, and brightest sure. moments. Let's look at that. Are we the people we were waiting for? Or, <laughs> this, is a, uh, this is a nice set. Thank you very much. Yeah, it, it reminds me of uh, the convention. We yeah, actually, yeah, we actually bought it. It was in a, it was in a warehouse. <laughs> Does that happen to you wherever you go? Is that the, just a, a wild when you because when, when you guys go to work, do people <laughs> typically applaud or it's a nice feeling? It, it, it was a wonderful welcome. Uh, it does not happen. Uh, for example, when I go to the Republican caucus meeting. I see. Look, look, let me say this about uh, about members of Congress. Uh, Are you going to curse? No, I'm not. Gonna curse. Uh, um, Larry Summers did a heck of a job trying to figure out how to... You don't want to use that phrase, I, dude. I saw. I was, uh... <laughs> pun intended. All right. All right. That's pretty funny. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the audience responded. You heard uh, uh, Doug say, but that still uh, seems uh, really inappropriate for president to do. But we are seeing more of that from presidents. Uh, did, did you have a sense from anyone last night that... Uh, this was uncomfortable, or was it just one big laugh fest? No, it was, it was one big laugh fest, but I mean, how many people in the audience are even going to vote, you know, and on Tuesday? I mean, I think a lot of the, pro the problem is, is that these people that watch Daily Show don't really end up turning out to the So the young anymore. voters, uh, kind of getting to Harry's point, I mean, the young voters may seem energized when he's been making and he's been going on these tours, he's at the University of Wisconsin, uh -huh. uh, and, and enthused, but are they going to get out of bed on Tuesday when Obama's name's not on the ballot and go vote for some congressional candidate they may not even know about? Yeah, historically, we haven't seen them do that in midterm elections. Let me end up uh, on that note with you guys. I mean, is that uh, going to be a problem, do you think, uh, for Democrats? Or, or you know, you're looking to, to get that young vote out, well, right? I think young voters were doubted in 2008. Uh, they turned out in record numbers. Uh, they're going to come out again in 2010. And not only do we have faith in young voters to come out in 2010 because they understand the stakes, we have a plan in place to turn these folks out. Our GOTV operation is unprecedented. We've had uh, organizers in 50 states in all 435 congressional districts for the last, not just six weeks, for the last 20 months. That has never happened in the history of party politics before, uh, and we think they're going to turn out. Uh, on November 2nd. It actually has happened before. We, we're doing the same thing. Um, and, and we think uh, young voters uh, have a real reason, especially in this election, to vote Republican. That's why we've spent so much time on college campuses. We've got a lot of voters who are, are young people who are going to be uh, graduating from college, and they're scared that they're not going to be able to get a job. And I think they're, they're right to be scared. So Whether that's, that's undergrad or graduate or even, even leaving high school. All right. Well, we're going to have to end it with, it, with that. Um, thank you guys both very much for joining us. And I guess we'll all know the answer to these questions in, in five days. Kiki, thank you very uh -huh, much for sure. being here with us again. And we'll see you, I hope, next Tuesday. And gosh, maybe a few more days in between. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and thank you. That's it for Washington Unplugged. Join us here every day at 1230 p.m. on CBSNews.com and at 9 p.m. on election night for a special edition of Washington Unplugged. I'm Jan Crawford. Have a great day.